I'm out for a stealthy overnighter in the woods and I'm using the Alpha Tent Poncho Shelter and some camo netting. Sometimes we just don't want to be noticed. I'm well, not a big fan of the camo really, not for general use. In this situation, it's perfect. So I'll show you in the morning how I pitch this Alpha Tent. It's pretty easy once you've set, got it all set up. I've chucked a few leaves on there to try and blend it in with the environment a bit. So let's get in. As you can see, it's pretty spacious in there. Yeah, not too bad at all. I can move across more to the left. I just don't want to put me boots on me quilt. But uh, yeah, I'm quite impressed. And a uh, lovely little outlook. I feel hidden. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right, I better get some tea on, I think. Oh no. Half a fire lighter. Jesus. I don't know, can I use a quarter? Time to make some new fire lighters. But yeah, that old gas stove will be uh, firing any minute now. There she goes, flames just coming through. Most of the smoke will disappear then. I'll get a cup of coffee on. See now it's going, proper going. Just put a log on every now and again. That water will be boiling in no time. Let's chop them in half. Make it seem like we've got four then, won't it? salt and pepper on there. Yeah, I think we'll stir fry the veg kind of thing. Yeah, just pump a log on there every few minutes. Keep it going. A mid layer of veg. Very nice. So you just have a little hole in there.
take your rubbish home. I always put it in my little side pouch, then I know what bit to clear up. And I think, yeah, we're boiling. Well, that's how quick it is. From lighting the stove to drinking the coffee, it's pretty damn quick. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil in there and it's going to cook in its own juices really I think when the veg is done I am going to if I can find it there we go yeah, I'm going to put this on the top. I know it's a bit dirty, but that'll burn off. I'm going to put that on the top and then um, barbecue the, the belly pork. Or the pork belly, as my mum would call it. We're ready for the first round. Go for this one first. I've put some big lumps on there, so it should, should slow it down and... Um, I could try. How does this work? Get another big lump on there. So there's still a bit of heat coming coming through. All right, let's try this pork belly then. Everything tastes so good out in the woods, doesn't it? It's all, all it's got is salt and pepper on it. Unbelievable. And it's just mixed veg, cooked in a bit of oil in the frying pan, well, in the saucepan rather, and a little bit of water, just so as they steam a bit. And they're tasty as well. Pretty much the same as the smothered veg I did. It's, it's better with butter, but Mark's got no butter this week. And what do you think of the shower? It's neat, isn't it? I already had the two cross sticks. I just hid them in the wood, so I knew where to go and get them. So I don't want to keep cutting sticks out of the hazel stands. But uh, yeah, I am quite a fan of this shower. Little firewood stash, that's handy. So my leftover bits of wood that I never got around to burning, I've just stashed them in there. And uh, yeah, maybe they'll be there if I come back again. There's lots of these little nooks under the trees. There must be some really old stalls. Here's another one. It's like a little cave under there. Right, well, it's time to start taking down the shelter. As you can see, I've got some leaves on it. So I'm hoping that I can just lift off this netting and give it a shake and all the leaves are going to fall out. Now I should be able to show you how the self tent is constructed. And what's underneath it? So you can see, I was sleeping on a thin air mat. My hang tight summer quilt. And my new Snug Pack Special Forces bivy bag. Let's see how small this all goes away. So, there's the quilt. It's pretty small.
There's the dirty bag, pretty small. So that's my sleep system. Coffee's ready, lovely. So today has been 776 in my mug. Nicaragua Esconidia. Escon, Escondidia. Starting as a malted milk biscuit covered in milk chocolate, this coffee seamlessly swings into chocolate orange on the finish for a super easy drinking cup. It's a swinging coffee. Woo! Coffee seamlessly swings into chocolate. Chocolate orange. Swing. Oh, so we've got a chocolate orange swing. <laughs> Let's see it swing. Uh, no. no, this coffee is not a swinger. I can't taste that at all. Get no chocolate orange. Oh. Yeah, so it's just across two long sticks. You make them roughly a foot longer than the diagonal eyelet length of your tarp. And poke them in. I've got on this stick going along there, I've got a point on each end. So you've got to get it exactly right. Going across this way, if you haven't got eyelets or you don't know how long to make the length, I can show you Can I? Yeah So I've got a I've got a Y I hope that's in shot I've got a, a, like a Y here and, a, and a, a little bit of a hook so that goes through the eyelet but it would also go through a webbing strap if that's what you've got and then the other end, the other end, I've got, I've got a notch that my line is tied around, and then going up to the loop and tied it off. So I've got an adjustable length on this one, so if you don't know how long to tie it, then do it with this one first. And then measure it with your other stick, and put a point on each end, and you know how long they have to be. So that's all I can tell you really, every tarp's different, so there's no point in telling you how long they are. But let's start taking it apart. Once you've got it set up, you should in theory, well you, you still need a little bit of line to do the diagonal lashing in the middle. But it's pretty basic. That's one line out. Let's do, do it that quick. This is a diagonal lashing, so it starts off with a clovitch, it ends with a clovitch, and uh, yeah, it's all backwards, isn't it? <laughs> this, uh, I can't remember all the technical terms, I'll have to look it up. Frapping comes to mind, but maybe I'm making that up, I don't know. So, diagonal hitch, you go diagonally across the wood, round a wood, and then diagonally over the two woods round a wood, diagonally over the two woods, round a wood, diagonally over the wood, round the bottom wood, diagonally back across. So you end up with a cross over the top. So that's a cross lashing. And then you do, I think it is called frapping actually. <coughs> you 
go round a few times, tighten it up and then do your clove hitch. Just do just two half hitches really and that's enough to hold it just to stop it sliding around really. And once you've done it once or twice it gets easy and especially so if you've uh, got your sticks already prepared in the woods or you write down how long they are or have a line that you use for the frapping and make it the length of one of these diagonals that would be a good way of doing it. As you can see on the other end well the, um, the second stick it's just got a point on each end so as long as you've got decent decent eyelet strength you should be alright with a point it's whatever works for you really but it's an interesting way to set up a little tarp <coughs> it's a bit claustrophobic when it's right down on top of you So I had one corner propped up, but I was looking at it afterwards in the morning and I thought, well, it's it's a low plough point with a hunch. It's exactly the same. It's just a different way of coming up with it. So, yeah, all these tarp setups, they're all, you know, they're all different, but there's only so many ways you can put up a, a square or an oblong tarp, really. So I just got to pack away my camp stove and I'm all done. A little stuff about. But, yep, yeah, left it exactly how I found it, really. Yeah, so, thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. See ya.